solving equations with variables on both sides. Our objective is to solve equations that contain variable terms on both sides. Why learn this? You can compare prices and find the best value. Let's look at solving equations with variables on both sides. You may want to get the variables to one side of the equation, so that way you're only trying to solve for one variable. So, in this case, once again, we're going to start with our line, same as we did before, so that way we know which side is our left and our right, and we want to move our variable to the other side of the equation. However, this 4 is kind of firmly attached, so the 4 is going with it. So, therefore, we're going to subtract 4k from both sides of the equation, leaving us with 3k equaling 15. Now it looks like an equation you've done numerous times in the past. So you're going to, once again, you're going to move the whole value with k to the other side of the equation, so that that way you only have one variable you're looking at. All right. So we're left with 3k equals 15. We want to divide both sides of the equation by 3, so that way it leaves us with k by itself, and k in this case equals 5. 4 times 5 plus 15 equals 7 times 5. So 4 times 5 plus 15 is 35, and 7 times 5 is 35. So we are good to go. Take a moment and pause the video and try B on your own. All right, so we're going to start with our line. And now we're going to move our x's to the same side of the equation. It doesn't matter whether you move your 5x or your 3x. I generally just try to keep it positive however I move things around. And if I subtract 3x from both sides, my x value does in fact stay positive. So 5x minus 3x is, that doesn't look very much so like a 2, let's try that again, is 2x, and we keep the rest of the equation alive. So we've got minus 2 equals 4. All right, well now this looks like one of those two-step equations we were practicing in the last section. So we're going to add 2 to both sides of the equation as we undo addition and subtraction first. Cancels that out. All we're left with is 2x. So 2x equals 6. Now we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. Because if this says 2 times x, the opposite of multiplying is to divide. This leaves us with x by itself on the left and 3 on the right. So now when we plug things back in, we end up with 5 times 3 minus 2, which is 13, and 3 times 3, which is 9, plus 4, which is 13. So we're good to go. Let's look at simplifying each side before solving equations. Yes, there are variables on both sides, but you need to simplify the left-hand side in this case before you can move your y's around. So you want to make sure your, each side of your equation is simplified before you start moving your variables. So let's distribute this 2. So we have 2y times, or sorry, plus 2 times 6, which is 12, and that equals 3y. So we're going to subtract 2y from both sides of the equation. And that leaves us with 12 equals y. Well, when we substitute this back in, we have 2 times 12 plus 6. So 2 times 18, which is 36. And 3 times 12, which is also 36. So yeah, we are good to go. It is correct. All right. So now, let's try B. So take a moment and pause the video and try it on your own first. Now 
Now that you've had a moment to try it on your own, let's try it together. This one has a lot of simplifying to be done before you can do any kind of solving. All right, let's look at the left-hand side of the equation first. So we have 3 minus 5b plus 2b. Our like terms are 5b and 2b. 3 is not a common term with these other ones. So 3 is going to chill out by himself. And now we have negative 5b plus 2b, which leaves us with a negative 3b. On the right-hand side of the equation, we're going to distribute this negative 2 before we do anything. So we have negative 2 minus 2, because negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. And we have negative 2 times negative b, which gives you positive 2b. All right, there are still like terms on the right-hand side. I'm going to change color so that way we can start seeing things a little easier. So we're going to rewrite the left-hand side of the equation because there's nothing else we can do right now. And we have negative 2 minus 2, which brings us to negative 4, and our 2b kind of just chills out. All right, now we can start moving our variables to the other side of the equation. Changing colors again. So we have plus 3b because we want to do the inverse to get rid of it. And I'm choosing to move the 3b so that that way my b values stay positive. So whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other. Our old rules still apply. So we're left with 3 on the left-hand side of the equation. This 3b is gone. And on the right-hand side, we're left with negative 4 plus 5b. Changing colors again. So we have, we're going to add 4 to both sides of the equation because we want to undo addition and subtraction first. So now we're left with 7 equals 5b. And now we can divide both sides of the equation by 5. And there's not really much you can do with 7 fifths. You can make it a decimal, which, so you can either go 7 fifths or 7 divided by 5 is 1.4. It doesn't matter which way you represent. And all you're left with on the right is b. When you substitute those in, you do in fact get two equations that are equal to each other. All right, let's keep going. An identity. An identity is when solving an equation, if you get an equation that is always true, the original equation is an identity, and it has infinitely many solutions. So basically, when you're solving an equation, if you end up with something like, hey, 2 plus x equals 2 plus x, it does not matter what value x is. You, x could be 40, x could be negative 17, it could be 33 halves doesn't matter what x is, the equation will stay and remain equal. That's what you have an identity. A contradiction is when solving an equation, if you get a false equation, the original equation is a contradiction, and it has no solutions. So in this case, hey, x equals x plus 3. There are no values for x that you can get that are going to give you an equal statement between these because 0 does not equal 3. You might like to think so, but it does not. All right, so let's practice this. So, infinitely many solutions or no solutions. So we want to start by simplifying both sides of our equation. So we're going to start with our line, so that way we make sure we've got both sides of our equation well known here. And on the left-hand side of the equation, you have x, and negative 6x, so we're left with a minus 5x and a positive 4. All right, on the right-hand side of the equation, the minus 5x, there's no like terms to go with it, so it's going to stay by itself. And then you have 6 and minus 2. Well, 6 and minus 2 make 4. 
You can stop here if you realize that both sides are exactly the same. Or you can go one more step just to really make sure you've got this down. So if you add 5x to both sides of the equation, you'll end up with 4 equals 4. Well, that's true no matter which way you look at it. So there are infinitely many solutions. Let's look at B. So once again, we're going to draw our line to separate our equation. All right, so we want to simplify the left-hand side of the equation. So we have negative 8x and a positive 9x. When you combine like terms, you're left with x. And 6 just kind of chills out by itself because there's no like terms to go with it. All right, minus 17 plus x. You could stop here because you can see, if you can see exactly what's going on. But if you can't, let's go one more step. So we're going to subtract x from both sides of the equation. And when we do so, we're left with 6 equals negative 17. Well, last time I checked, 6 does not equal negative 17. So therefore, there are no solutions. And that concludes our lesson on solving equations with variables on both sides.